this is a lily uh, the genus is lilium this is an asiatic lily so it's probably a hybrid but they you could say that it was lilium asiatica it belongs in the lily family liliaceae which is in the order liliales and it is a monocot typical of monocots parts and threes for one thing and the fact that the petals and the sepals are petaloid so therefore there are there are tepals but basically let's look at this for example and then we'll see exactly what we're dealing with here we have what looks like six uh petals but they're not they are, they are six tepals, and the inner ones are actually these three inner ones, and you can see they are they are definitely inside. They you see that they are inside there, and they are the the petal derived ones, and the outer ones are the sepal derived ones, and of course they the sepals, which which are there were basically what protected a bud, and for and here is a here for example here is a bud, and these there are three sepals which are protecting that bud, and eventually as they mature they become petaloid, they become these yellow parts. So basically we have therefore the. We have a perianth of six tepals, and they are, you know, the uh, the outer ones. And then, of course, the important thing for you to look at too is the fact that the the sepal derived tepals are on the outside, and they meet right there. And in the center, where they meet, is where the petal. So that we say that that is alternate. So the Petals and the sepals are alternate to one another, even in this case. And they are considered two series, even though they look alike. Okay, now let's see what else we have here. We have in the center, we have six stamens. The andresium is of six stamens. The brown, of course, are the anthracs and the long pale yellow are the filaments and the filaments are, are attached to the um, anthracac at the middle of the anthracac's back we say you know, see that and that's called a versatile arrangement it's called dorsifix actually when and that happens a lot in other things but not many of the anthers are as fragilely attached as these are and they are attached that way because of something called buzz pollination a bee will come get its wings moving very quickly making a buzz sound and that's enough to get these versatile anthers moving around enough to release their pollen now in the center i'm going to show you here i guess it's easy can you see it I'm going to try to get a, a view here where you can see there. There it is. There in the center is the pistil. And in the pistil uh, of a gynecium, you have the, uh, the, the stigma, which is three-lobed. And what you can see is the stigma, and you can see the style. You can't see the ovary. It's actually a superior ovary. And it's down in the base there. You see, there's nothing on the other side. There's nothing here. The the uh, ovary is inside. It's what's called a superior ovary. That makes this flower a hypogenous flower. Okay, now what I'm going to do is sort of, I'm going to take apart, take these away. I'm going to take off the three um, sepal-derived petals that's one let's see here's two 
and here over here is three. So now I've taken away those three alternate tuples, and now I'm going. We have what's left. We're, we're working down to nothing here. We have basically three petal derived tuples, and that, and what what's interesting there. I want to show you one of these. I'm going to take these off. The pollen will probably will will get them. But, oh, these are beautiful. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Can you see these? Uh, okay, I'm going to put this down for a moment. And I'm going to show you. There's like a channel right through the mid, uh, mid of that petal. And then down below here, can you see how it, it gets tighter? And that forms a kind of a... A, a, a way that the butterflies or the bees with proboscis can move their their tongues, their coiled tongues, down into that slot to get to the nectar. It, it gives them a guide to where the nectar is, and it's nice and smooth, which is what they like. Okay, so there we go. We have six tuples, and we now have the the andresium with six. Uh, petals. I'm going to take those off, and you can see as I do that, you can see how the uh, anther sac is, is attached, and now you can begin to see the superior ovary showing on this pistil. And what's, in, what's there, I want to get it out of the way so you can just see it clearly. All uh, right, can you see that? Well, I'm going to get it over here so you can see the whole business because basically what we've got here is a, this is the stem which leads into it and since it's a single flower, it's known as a peduncle and you can see how it gets wider a little bit at, it, at its apex, that's called the receptacle. And everything is attached. The four series of the flower are attached to that receptacle. And what's left now in the center is the pistil. It's a compound pistil. And you can always tell the it's a compound pistil made up of three carpels. The you can and you can see, I don't know whether you can actually see it from your point of view, but there are three lobes there. And that gives you a clue to how many carpels make up that uh, pistol. All right, and then down here is the um, superior ovary that makes this flower a hypogenous flower. So that's basically it. I could do a cross section over here, but I don't think you, you know, that's what you want to do to see what it's like. Uh, but I don't think you're going to see much from from me oh there that's that one there are three uh locules in there the dark green in the center is the placenta and it's axile placentation so there you go that is our oily